we can make work easier with the use of jigs and fixtures machine controls and displays and dials few things like that so uh, we all know that uh, a worker who's in a workplace will have a setup in front of him or her could be a table and there'll be few few uh, equipments which are used for fitting there will be some uh, semi finished products which may he or she may have to assemble so the idea of this chapter is to uh, make efficient operations and elimination of unnecessary or idle time uh, more eff a more effective operation of processes the services which are there in terms of labor could be more efficiently used eliminate the time uh, time consuming movements which are not uh, adding any value so these are all some concerns we address in this chapter so when we are doing a particular study or when we are looking at a job and trying to understand how method is being done, method is being implemented we can always look at from few different angles like purpose place sequence person and means so let's go yeah so purpose place sequence person and means uh, that is why the job is necessary uh, we to in, in ensure that uh, it is being done where it should be done at the correct place the sequence in which the work is being performed should be right sequence so uh, it is very simple like if you have to uh, make a 5 5 or uh, 10 cm diameter shaft okay so would you and you have to first reduce the length to length as well as reduce the diameter okay so length is let's say 20 uh, 20 cm of the stock and then uh, you have to reduce to 15 cm and diameter is to be reduced from 12 cm to 10 cm okay so uh, what do you think is a correct way first you should be doing facing or turning ya fark nahi padta hai sir turning why facing why sir facing karenge to length which mein turning karni ho length kam ho jayegi hmm so uh, there's no definite answer right now until unless you do some calculation and find out time is equal or different right so uh, the thing is you have to question the sequence ki pehle kya karna chahiye okay similarly to ensure that it is being done by the right person okay and then the means is by which the job is being done and we simplify them as much as it is economically justified so when we are uh, applying the principles of motion economy it can be broadly class classified into three headings that is uh, use of the human body arrangement of the workplace and design of tools and equipment so uh, broadly we can uh, say when i'm trying to understand a job being done and uh, i'm trying to apply principles of motion economy there are three headings that is the use of the human body how the human body is being used arrangement of the workplace so man and then machine and the workplace so three things are there <clears throat> so uh, let's say uh, we have uh, we have this is a very good tool this is called a fishbone diagram ishikawa cha ishikawa diagram or cause and effect diagram to start with we can always uh, see that uh, let's say some problem is there that a bottleneck there is a bottleneck process i have already explained the bottleneck earlier now this bottleneck could be because of what it, it first let's find out whether it is a cause or an effect a process is a bottleneck process hmm so is it a cause or an effect first 
Tell me. Is it a cause or an effect? Effect. Yeah, this is an effect that a certain process has become bottleneck. What are the causes for that? We can search the causes broadly in five different headings like operator, equipment, materials, method, and surroundings. Hmm. Surroundings could be uh, one reason that if you look at the surroundings, uh, layout is chaotic. Layout chaotic means uh, there is too much crisscrossing of the movement of the workers between the workstations. Hmm? That is a chaotic layout. So this, this could be one of, because if there is too much chaos, then uh, crisscrossing is there, a lot of confusion will be there. Bottle, uh, you can say, there'll be uh, waiting lines at several places. So you don't want that to happen. So you can say that layout is chaotic could be one cause. Then you have lack of efficient fixture. So tooling equipment is pla uh, placed is unreasonable. So this is these are some generic points we are writing. It is not specific to any particular machine, just that we are saying that this particular process associated with the machines associated with this process are causing bottlenecks. Method could be uh, operational uh, operation unreasonable or operator action does not comply with the principles of the motion economy. That means he's doing it incorrectly, the job. Operator proficiency is not enough. That is uh, the technical part of the operator. That uh, technique, there's some technical issue with the operator. And then materials could be uh, material racks are placed at unreasonable locations. So the raw material, we have to fetch the raw material from a very far away place or something like that. And the material is not easy to easy to uh, place or something like this. So uh, this is a very good diagram. You can now after this diagram. Further, what can be done is which actually is not there in the slide, nor in the book, but I can tell you that how further it can be used. After making this chart, you can uh, find out uh, frequency with which is happening. Let's say because of lack of effective fixture, uh, how much it is contributing in the whole process in terms of percentage you can find out that if uh, the time taken by, by this process is let's say 20 minutes so in this in that 20 minutes how much uh, is lack of effective fixture adding it adding up so you can uh, find out in terms of percentage that how much each of this cause is causing uh, is contributing in the percentage percentage time and then uh, you can see that, okay, I want to uh, take the top three uh, ones. You can make a histogram and find out that the top three, which are the top three operations or causes which I can handle, and then you can work on it. So this is an improvement uh, uh, tool also. So uh, the as I've told you that, uh, headings which we are talking about is uh, use of human body arrangement of the workplace and design of tools and equipment so the first one uh, use of the human body when possible so it's simply telling few things about the movement of the hands that, that they should uh, begin together uh, there should be less idle time in the whole process as we have seen earlier, if you recollect in the previous class also, that uh, nuts were nuts and bolts were being screwed and there was a washer also. So earlier it was being done in a different fashion. Then a fixture uh, fixture was there in which the bolts were in inverted and then they were they were tightened. So you could possibly see in that video that uh, the hands were busy most of the time. So that's what is being said over here that motion of the arms or the motion of the hands should not be idle or the two hands should keep on moving most of the time. The time where you are working. There should be symmetrical motions. Like if your hand is going in, one hand is going in one direction, the other hand should go in the opposite direction. So it's a symmetrical 
try to uh, make the work motion of uh, motion of the motion of the workers in more symmetrical form that again was evident in that video which i have shown you which was quite symmetrical <clears throat> hand and body motions should be made at the lowest classification so classification uh, uh, if you if you can open one, i think it's not i forgot to put it in the slide but uh, if you can open the book i'll just tell you just a second what is the meaning of classification so there is a there is a table on page number 143 we can see that uh, table 9 where uh, classification lowest classification is a finger and the highest classification is the complete upper body you can say you can say torso which is also including the upper arm forearm hand and fingers so try to have uh, the motions for the lowest classification that is your work should be uh, try to have your work possibly done with only help of your fingers right like you have buttons so automation gives you that flexibility where you can only you can just by pushing buttons you can do the work so that's what it says that hand and body motions should be made at the lowest classification so which gives the maximum work satisfaction also which is quite true with the uh, white collar jobs so momentum should be employed to help the worker but uh, it should be we should try to reduce to minimum wherever it has to be overcome by muscular effort so again it order it uh, promotes the use of robots and all uh continuous curved movements are to be preferred to straight line motions so for that curved movements basically uh involve lesser effort as compared to sudden jerks in straight lines and ballistic movements are faster easier and more accurate that is free swinging motions than the restricted or controlled movements and a sort of a rhythm should be there in the work while we are doing uh, an operation rhythm basically means that even with the robotic machines you would find that rhythm gives you more efficiency for the simple reason that you keep on going at the same pace you can also find those examples while you are exercising uh, if you are if you are jogging even then uh, if you if you if anyone can connect that if you jog let's say and uh, uh, you feel when you when you feel that you are running very smoothly there is a rhythm like uh, your your left leg is landing at equal time intervals every time and is uh, and is uh, traversing equal distance at each step so which is a ryth rhythm okay so uh, the repetitive operation if it there's a rhythm of the human motion in that it is much easier to do these are some of the i mean you can also also read it yourself so they are pretty much self explanatory so i won't be uh, going too much in detail of all this but then the second part is arrangement of the workplace now how the workplace should be arranged is uh, so the the tools uh, tools like which you use like spanner or screw driver and many other things like even your machine uh, machine tools which are there so they should be provided at fixed place and they should be located in certain way that it leads to habit formation that means if i need a screw driver i should not have to think that where is it located i should automatically go there and pick it up okay you might find that happening in your kitchen also like in kitchen there are few tools knives are there and you have 
many other tools like that so if they are placed at a certain place they they as they are placed at a certain location your mother or if you have ever intervened in your uh, kitchen then you would find that happening even uh, uh, you can consider that at your desk if you arrange your desk properly you will try to keep things like pen sharp, your sharpeners your stapler or anything like that in your desk and then you generally wouldn't have to find out where is it located you just place your hand there and you get it so uh, it should lead to habit formation formation of habit again leads to increase in efficiency so again it's saying pre positioning and then you should use a uh, gravity feed for the movement of the products as much as possible um, tools materials and controls should be located within the maximum working area as near the worker as possible for the simple reason movement will be less and uh, i mean various other like color coding and few uh, other things like provision uh, good lightning and height and all those things are there so it was talking about uh, you see normal working area this uh, this sort of if you are working on a bench or a table this is generally your comfortable working area for the two hands finger rest and so this is uh, how it should be the movement then you have design of tools and equipment uh, which says that hands should be relieved of all the work holding so probably there should be no work holding uh, as much as possible the ho work holding means that uh, if i need a screw driver i should not have to carry it in my hand so then where do i keep it so there is a there could be an arrangement of uh, tools which are hanging above you so whichever tool you need you can pull it down and use it uh, i think i did uh, in good video somewhere i will see if i can show you that video where uh, uh, you can you, you have an arrangement of overhead hanging tools so you are not actually holding it there you must you must have in the car workshop you might have seen that uh, these tools they keep hanging and then they just pull it and they use it and then again they it, it gets retrieved by spring <clears throat> then uh, we talk about design of tools and equipment so this is the first point to and the second point is two or more tools should be combined wherever it is possible to combine the tools so generally you would find some magazines uh, a, a magazine is something like rotary uh, a, a, a shaft on which multiple tools are uh, mounted and then you can choose one of the tool and uh, get on working with it so you might have seen the screw driver multi purpose screw driver also where a kit comes where you have many many uh, bits of different type of screw uh, different type of profile of the screw driver and then aap usme se jo bhi aapko jis tarike ka slot mein aapko lagana hai you so you just take out the bit and then place it in the screw driver so uh, that is another one which i was talking about Sir, then tane isme uh, example ha huh? swiss knife ka example aa sakta hai isme yeah swiss knife yeah uh, so very good example swiss knife is a good example for that although it may not be not it might not be uh, used exactly in the industry but then again it is a kind of a tool where you have combined many tools into one yes sir
ideal condition where your working area for left and right hand is given that uh, how it should be maximum working area should be like this and uh, you can see the shaded portion and uh, it should avoid uh, this part black part the white part should be avoided because here the interference of the left and the right hand will be there so normal working area is represented over here that is a comfortable position that is the black part and the grid over here is uh, the you can say optimum working area for an individual and beyond this even in the this completely white area and these lines which are shown over here if your span is uh, going in this side then probably it will not be the best posture for a worker to work on then classification of movements now here i have placed the table so fourth rule of motion economy is the use of human body uh, which is uh, to be in the lowest classification lowest classification means to use your pivot is the knuckle and the finger so obviously we can see that uh, more movement is there with the higher classification which should be uh, avoid could be avoided as much as possible so some of the other uh, things are also there like uh, if a similar working is work is being done by each hand there should be separate supply of materials for both the hands so because if both hands are reaching towards the same part uh, you will not uh, achieve that efficiency so if you are using nut using uh, nuts uh, if you are screwing nuts in certain slots so for both hands it should be available if eyes are used to select material as far as the possible the material should be kept in an area where eyes can locate it so no need to search like uh, avoid searching as much as possible use semi circular arrangement in preference to semi circular arrangements and uh, design the workplace using ergonomic principles so ergonomics is something which is a different field or to all together which uh, talks about the comfortable positions of the human body like height of the chair or uh, cushioning of the chair or the even the seat belts in the cars what should be the force on the seat belt and uh, all the issues uh, related to the uh, working comfort working conditions for a human body are uh, related with the ergonomics or even a screw driver what is the best uh, grip for a screw driver that again comes in ergonomics so the sitting position recommended this is the sitting position that is being recommended over here and the nature and the shape of the material influence its position in the layout so use various bins uh, for that purpose so you can see semi circular and circular were uh, working arrangement so you can see it is uh, a correct one like and what is incorrect is this is incorrect this is circular arrangement and this is a semi circular arrangement because you can see over here uh, here it is spanning more in circular arrangement the arc is larger which makes it uncomfortable 
uh, as well as uh, it occupies the central position which is not good so some dimensions of seating is also given these are all uh, all standards which have been laid down by the average adult height according to average adult height they have been designed and like thickness of the work surface should be 5 cm and uh, clearance for the leg and the other parts here yeah, and the work surface height so you can also see that your tables are generally of this height only 65 to 72 cm hand tools should be picked up with least possible disturbance to the rhythm and symmetry of the movements so it's saying that if hand tools are to be picked up and placed back again this sh there, there should be uh, no mixing of the hand tools like if you have to if 10 hand even though uh, 10 different hand tools are there and they are lying on the table they should be easily they could be easily picked it's not like you have to select one again search and then pick one out of that so that should not be it should not be like that so that kind of disturbance should not be there rhythm try to uh, incorporate more and more rhythm in it and uh, symmetry of movements should be there and natural movements are generally curved and not straight uh, so this is uh, another example which is given over here that various uh, bins could be like if you have different different so you can use a rotating bin for that purpose and when you finish the work it should be dropped down a hole or a chute um, dropped through chute when And so the dropping should happen in the next cycle and not in the end of the cycle. There are many other principles like this, like if the operation is an intermediate one. Actually, uh, what I'm going to do uh, related to mostly method studies that uh, once we are done with this, I think today or in the next class we'll be done with the method study. So uh, I'll give you an assignment to do at your home. So there you will be reading all these things and trying to apply it in a real life. Then you will really appreciate what it is uh, talking about. Otherwise, it's simply uh, going through uh, the stuff and it really wouldn't contribute much to your learning. So that's why. So whatever we are uh, reading over here are mostly uh, some generic principles which could be used in designing of a workplace or motions of the workers right uh, like they are talking about using of the bins earlier so double bins and and uh, the other kind of bins if you have multiple small uh, parts to be fitted so they can be used like this. Although uh, the times have changed now, more and more assembly is being done by the robots. So humans are still uh, involved, but less. You could see that in that factory video, which I've shown of the automobile. You won't see too many workers there, except that when the body uh, was totally built and body was already fitted on the chassis, the inner parts of the automobile were being fixed by the workers over there. So they generally use small parts in the fitting. Then uh, uh, this, uh, they're saying this is kind of a shoot that they were talking about, that if you have to uh, drop the finished part, then it should be something like this. So example of a workstation layout is uh, I'll show that yeah so, yeah so you can see that various things that we were talking about earlier could be seen over here for example a fixture has been provided for holding the workpiece 
so this is a fixture which has been provided here for holding the workpiece we have also seen this fixture in uh, one of the videos which we saw earlier so what is the advantage of uh, using fixture over here can anyone tell what is the advantage of what is the advantage of having a fixture so number of steps process may reduce ho jayenge because wo pakad ke nahi rakhna padega hame at least yeah so, so the, what principle of motion economy is it fulfilling if i ask more particularly uh we are we are using one hand purely for if if it was not there if let's say fixture is not there so one hand will be busy holding and principle of motion economy says that your both hands should be free and they should not be engaged in holding hmm. so it can be avoided with the use of fixture uh the necessary tools are suspended you can see here the necessary tools are suspended over here in front of the operator so that uh, he or she has to make only very short and easy movements the he uh, the worker uh, will not have to move to a different place to get the uh, th these kind of tools from somewhere and searching is also not required because with rhythm and regular practice he knows that where is what tool suspended like uh, the grinding wheel grinding wheel is there small drill drills are over here they can be used the work you can see this is a kind of a circular arrangement of the tools hammer and the wire cutter you can are an easy this is a wire cutter over here so it is an easy access so stretching is uh, has to be minimum so trays and uh, classifiers are used over here to classify the parts similar shapes are kept in same small bins all the small small parts are close to the operative and in the maximum working area hmm? each part is uh, having a definite location and trays are designed with scoop fronts so scoop fronts means that the design of the trays is such that you can uh, just take it out like a scoop and a uh, few other things we can see over here that so, uh, they the arrangement is uh, done so that the mo motion of the arms could be symmetrical and parts could be assembled simultaneously while they are being picked up okay so these are some observations that we can make from this figure over here also uh, we talk about jigs and fixtures so what is jig and a fixture a jig holds the parts in an exact position and guides the tool to Uh, tool that works on them so rather than uh, talking it talking it out uh, let's uh, see a video hmm? so could you please open the attendance link as well yeah i'll open that while the video is being played okay sir quickly and confidently so you never have to slow down at work instant corrections make your writing mistake free jigs and fixtures are used in polyglot parts so you can see over here that uh, uh 
Jig will help in uh, locating and guiding the tool that works on them. So this is a tool, drilling tool, which is working on uh, working on a workpiece, and uh, the holes will uh, on this jig will help you in locating. Their general purpose is to locate and hold the work securely. The cover, if we rest it on a single point, it can still move in a number of ways. It can rock up on two points and cover one of these tilting movements. It's accomplished. But if a of movement, a fifth point restricts the freedom of movement still further, so long as the block is kept in contact. Finally, the addition of a sixth point establishes the definite location we are seeking. Therefore, we see that it is necessary to have at least six locating points correctly arranged to definitely position a piece at a certain place. So we need six points to locate piece at a certain place, a uh, rectangular piece. But sometimes a fewer number of stops can be employed successfully because some of these stops may combine several locating points in one member. For example, if we have a round hole in a piece of work, this can slide over a peg of the same diameter, which prevents the work from sliding to the left or right, or from front to back. If a shoulder is provided so the work can rest against it, it will locate the work it work from rocking. Therefore, the only remaining movement that it can make is to rotate. If the work is held against a second stop, it is located definitely in a single position. Round work is frequently located by means of a V-block, which combines two locating points in a single member. These V-blocks and one end stop provide... So tell me one thing, this V-block is a jig or a fixture? Yeah, hold on. Is it a jig or a fixture? Yeah. So it's a jig. Is it helping locating? So what is the basic purpose of this is to uh, locate? Provide us with suitable locating means for a cylindrical piece, which need not be restricted against rotation. V-blocks are suitable for locating members having rounded portions, and they are also convenient for clamping means, as in this case. Whenever we support a flat surface, it is preferable to use only three fixed points, and these should be spaced as far apart as possible. If we supply more supporting points than this, the additional points should be adjustable, and this is a good form of adjustable support. A spring in the base ensures contact between the plunger and the work, while the set screw clamps the plunger firmly in place. And regardless of the amount of pressure applied to the screw, the work is not distorted. The taper slide acts to resist any pressure against the support. The locating surfaces should be as small as possible, consistent with bearing area and wear, in order to make it easy to keep the fixture free of dirt and chips that would interfere with the proper seating of the part. If a locating pin is to fit within a hole in the part, it should be tapered to permit the work to be placed over it easily, and should be hardened and ground to size. A burr clearance should be provided around the pin. If flat surfaces are used at right angles, a dirt groove should be incorporated. In general, buttons are better supports and locating means than flat surfaces, and a button is better if it is placed end-on instead of sideways to the work. The work should be supported as nearly in line with the tool thrust as possible. In this case, the work is not adequately supported, and the thrust tends to bend the work. Another thing, the leverage of the extended work requires more clamping pressure to secure the piece. When the clamping jaws are more nearly in line with the thrust, 
the work is much better supported against the pressure applied by the tool. A fixture should always be designed so that the tool pressure comes against the solid part of the fixture and not against the movable or clamping portion. The part may be clamped in a variety of ways. Here is an example of a lever combined with a screw clamp. Sometimes a cam is used, and here is an interesting example. A wedge is another method of clamping. Whatever kind of clamp is used, the work must be correctly supported. This can be readily understood if we consider a board on two sawhorses. If pressure is applied in the middle, the board will bend. A good example of the prop clamping principle is an ordinary pair of pliers. But to each other, the jaws can get a good grip on the work. Whereas, if we had a pair of pliers in which the jaws were not opposite to each other, they would obviously fail to work properly and would tend to bend the piece to which they were applied. Therefore, with this principle in mind, we can readily see the need for an adequate support directly under the clamping point. Drill jigs should be supplied with legs. Otherwise, chips would be more likely to interfere with the jig setting squarely on the table. Many authorities prefer using four legs, so that if any dirt gets under one of them, it can be instantly detected because it permits the jig to run. It is important that these legs be made larger than the slot in the drill table, so that there is no danger of their dropping. The feet on a jig should be as far apart as possible, so that when pressure will not tip. One of the most important forms of jigs is the box jig, in which the top is hinged so that it may be open to insert work and closed for the purpose of clamping. In this form, it must be kept in mind that the top must be accurately located if it contains any bushings, so that these will always come in the same place when the jig is closed. For this reason, it is better to have the ears rotate on the hinge pin, which is a drive fit in the center portion, as this provides better support. A still better method is to have the top fit closely between the sides, which provides the maximum possible support. In the case of drill jigs, bushings are used to guide the drill or other tool into the proper position. It may be pressed in permanently if only one size of drill is to be used. If several operations are to follow each other, such as a drill followed by a reamer, it is necessary to use slip bushings. These should be arranged so that they can be quickly changed, yet firmly held so that they do not work out during the operation of the tool. Here are several holding means for using these slip bushings. If a threaded bushing is used, it is advisable to locate the bushing by a smooth cylindrical surface, using the threaded section only for the purpose of holding the bushing in place. If the inner corner of the top of the drill bushings were left sharp, the drill would not enter easily. Therefore, these edges should be either rounded to a radius or beveled off. This chamfering should be the same angle as the point of the drill. There should be a space between the bottom of the drill bushing and the work to allow room for chip clearance. This space is usually approximately equal to the diameter of the hole being drilled. Now you give the attendance. If the drill bushing is brought into contact with the work, the chips must pass out through the top of the bushing. This is occasionally permissible if the hole is a shallow one which must be very accurately located. Another function that is frequently incorporated in both jigs and fixtures is the indexing of parts to produce a series of accurately spaced holes, slots, and so forth. Such fixtures range from the simplest hand-operated indexing disc and a pin like this, to automatic fixtures which are adapted to high-speed production of large quantities of parts. The part is held in the collet, which is tightened by a spanner wrench. After each slot is cut, a plunger on the right-hand side of the fixture strikes a stop, thereby indexing the part for the next operation. Removing the protective casing, we can see how this operates. A ratchet turns the mechanism while a pin locks the mechanism while the cut is being taken. 
The reason for the existence of jigs and fixtures is the fact that they provide aid to the rapid production of duplicate parts. The amount of refinement and elaborateness of design of a jig or fixture naturally depends upon the number of parts and the saving in time it will affect. But in any case, it is important that the best parts work smoothly and So, uh, I was thinking we would be able to complete the chapter today, but uh, anyway. So, uh, in the next class, we'll complete this chapter. And uh, now we are almost at the end of the method uh, method study. So, uh, I'll be giving an, an assignment uh, in the next class, which uh, you'll be doing at your home. And probably you'll be able to uh, do something good from whatever we have learned. Okay, so any doubts? Uh, I'll be closing the session now. So, you mentioned that you have answers. Uh -huh. So, uh, when can we 